Hey everybody, Sam here and Angela and welcome to our channel. So today we want to bring you guys along on a little bit of a different video as we are working on resetting up, renovating, remodeling, repairing our 1988 Palm Harbor Single Wide Mobile Home. Not everything we do can be packaged real prettily into a project. So what today's video is going to be is more of a, I guess behind the scenes, the little stuff that we do or have done over the past week that still chips away at our to-do list, but is not magnanimous in one big giant project, if that makes sense. Kind of like watching grass grow. Or drywall drying. One of the things that I'm doing right now, I'm out here at the back door. This is the new outdoor outlet that we put right here after reframing the door. I'm gonna go ahead and work on just connecting the wires. I don't think we have our GFI outlet. Although actually we probably do, I just don't know where it is exactly. I don't have my GFI, I'm not ready to close it off and plug it up for sure. <sighs> Unless I change my mind, I don't know guys. But for now, I'm going to connect these, jumper them, and then go back into the house because I'm working on making sure all of our electrical connections are correct, the continuity is correct, and there's no issues there. So I'm kind of running through doing a little miniature electrical inspection on our house. For my electrical connections, I'm not using traditional twist wire nuts. We're using more of these Wago lever lock nuts. These are absolutely worth every penny they cost, both in ease and ease. <laughs> they're just, they're great. I forget where I first saw them. I'm sure it was on YouTube. But ever since then, trying them out um, way back before we ever did any of the house moving stuff, I, yeah, I was sold on them. They are a little bit pricey. Okay, they're a lot pricey if you compare them to the traditional twisting wire nuts but for the average person and even us doing this large of a project that we have done with the house they're worth it i've had to go back and redo some outlets and junction boxes or troubleshoot and just being able to lift the lever and pull it off or put it right back down connect it that's so much better than untwisting everything because then you run the risk of making your copper lines brittle, then breaking, then you get your wires even shorter and shorter, and that's just not a good situation to be in. I've got the junction box or outlet box out here continued. Uh, this is one of the many mobile home moves is to use an outlet as a junction box as well. So for right now, it's just a junction box. We'll go ahead and let Angela know she can juice back up the house. We have, um, I don't know if I want to say that or not. In order to test electrical connections, we have a battery connected to our home feeding some power. I'm not going to go into details on that because it can be dangerous, but we are powering the home as if it was from mains electrical. We're just using a battery and inverter system. So we'll go ahead and have Angela flip that back on. It'll energize this and I can move on down the line, checking polarity, checking wiring, and just checking our work. Juice it up, buttercup. Oh, no, plug it up first. Plug it in, plug it in. There you go. And you can turn them all on. Like everything. Everything. All good? Yep. Cool. While we're out here talking about electricity, I picked up a new little tool. This is one, I picked it up from Lowe's. It is a non-contact AC electrical detector. It allows you to touch things with this probe, even the wires, and it tells you whether or not they're juiced up. So in this case, here we have our wires exposed. If I just place them next to it, wait, I gotta turn it on. All right, green is go. If I just place it next to it, it beeps, it turns red, it tells me that's juiced up. Very handy little guy. With the exception, this is a cheap one. I have learned the hard way that this cheap one is not accurate. It is glitchy. It tells me power is on when I know it's not on. The whole house is disconnected and it's still beeping at me. You can, let me turn it on and show you. See how I've just rubbed the house and it fusses at you? I think it detects static electricity or the minutest little movement and voltage it freaks out over. Even though it's only supposed to be 50 volts. I guess that means I'm generating 50 volts. Huh, cool. Either way, it's glitchy. It's a little too sensitive on that front. But with these wires right here, before I had the camera turned on, did this, Angela unplugged everything. Cool, we're good to go. 
I only had the one breaker turned off because we're troubleshooting a few other things. Got no sense. Oh, just like now. Do you see that? It is laying right there on that hot wire, the black wire. I know there's juice, but it's not beeping and it's telling me green for go. Don't buy this one. Do not buy this right here. It was $9 from Lowe's and it is not money worth spending because I electrocuted myself earlier. That was not fun. So this little guy, not worth it. Don't buy it. There are others that are probably about $28 that are reputable name brand. I think Klein makes one, Speary makes one. You know, they're in the hardware stores. You can tell consumer, homeowner quality name brands and the others, get the others. Because I just wasted 10 bucks and I juiced my thumb up. I'm all right, didn't get hurt, but it wasn't fun. It's a hard lesson to learn about this guy. Yeah, look at that, look at that. I know what you're gonna tell me, Sam, the whole thing is not the detector only the tiny little tip yes although i can't recreate it right now earlier i had the tip and everything all around the wires still got juiced up there's our temporary access points for the home before we had the block foundation done, we had some cinder blocks stacked up as a stairwell for the front door. The concrete guys took them apart, kind of messed them up, but they're not back. So for now, we're using the ladder. But since the block work's done, the trench is done, we're just waiting on that inspection, we're very close to being able to do final grade and really prepare and plan to build our front porches, back deck, all that kind of stuff, and have nice, easy access to the home. So for now, we're rocking the ladder. It works. It's not great, but it works. All right, in the house now. It's enough about Sam. What is Angela doing? Let's check in with her and see what she's been up to in here. Well, I have been working on finishing drywall. We've not really been filming it a whole lot because I come in when I have a little bit of time just to add a coat, sand a little, sponge a little, whatever I need to do. So, sorry guys, you don't get to see all the nitty gritty on this one, but it was just a lot easier to come in and off times to do this part. Plus, we have a lot of videos in our library on YouTube showing us doing drywall work. I'll link those down below. Now, I'll also say that, to say this, to say everything, we are going to be showing some drywall finishing in the coming weeks, probably. Probably. But just not in here. I will say this too, I'm saying all sorts of stuff. You did this entire room yourself. Pretty much. It looks awesome. I've come in here and I've looked, you know, nitpicking. There's not much to nitpick at all. You really, really have done good. You didn't use the right tools. I mean, I kind of fussed about, you can't do everything with a six inch knife. You gotta use the eight inch and the 11 inch, but I mean, it's just, it still looks good. Thank you. So I'm proud of it. It's the room I'll sleep in. So I am getting ready to do a little bit more drywall in here. We're pretty much to just the little finishing touches. I have a little bit around the window and then kind of getting to where the laundry area is and stuff. I still have some outside corners that I have to do because I don't know, for me, it takes like multiple, multiple, multiple coats. So I just have to keep adding on. So that's what I'm doing next. So that's your fun? That's my fun. All right, well have fun. All right, I think you guys are gonna stick with me for a little bit because I'm the jabber box between the two of us. She is the workaholic right now on drywall. Um, I don't know what exactly I'm gonna get into, but as soon as I figure it out, you'll see me. We are now gonna be taking out this upper cabinet because we may or may not have taken advantage of Memorial Day savings and got a new refrigerator. Our old one was like 14 years old, which is kind of the average lifespan. And we figured, why not make our house a little bit newer whenever we move in? So we need to get rid of this. On this old mobile home cabinet, there is a false bottom on it. It's just a little piece of, I don't know, paneling. And it hides where the screws are that they put it up with. I'm going to try and take this apart little bit by little bit so I don't have to rip holes in the wall trying to get it out. Okay. 
got the bottom panel off and now you can see all the screws that are holding it up. Hopefully there's none around the top. I guess we'll take these out and see. What, no words of victory there? I still got two left. Because we have more false sides and bottoms. Secrets and lies. Secrets and lies. Face frame's holding it in. Just this. You probably. I know, but you hang it from it. Wow. We have minimal damage. I was surprised there were no more screws in it as well as that face frame held on to everything. There is a little bit of caulk that I got to scrape off the sides and then it's going to be on to taking off the other wall over there. The trim pieces on it so I can go ahead and do the corners of the drywall and then the inside quarters in there that have never been done. Yes, I'm going to do them because you're still going to be able to see it from the top, like over the refrigerator. Right now we have no plans to put in a cabinet up there. We may in the future, but not right now. I've been working on installing an outlet back here at our kitchen. We took this out whenever we were working in the bedroom and had to get the wires out of the way to add in the framing members to support our kitchen cabinets. So I'm at the point where I'm ready to put this outlet back. I went ahead and got a new outlet and I have found my favorite outlets so far. I mean, subject to change in the future, right? These are Leviton Plus outlets. They are made in the USA. They're 15 amp outlets. What I really, really like about them is they are side wire outlets. What that means is you don't have to curl the ends of your wires and wrap them around your terminals on the sides. You just strip them off and stick them in there straight. They go behind a little plate that clamps them so it is secure, it is correct, and it is a much faster way to wire your outlets. Take a look at this one. So you can see here, the neutral and the hot both lay in there, clamp down, they're perfectly fine. I also like that this particular brand outlet has a steel bar that runs across the back. It's not plastic, it is encased in metal. And that bar goes all the way around to your ground screw, which is also attached right here to your face screws. So very good quality. It's not a whole lot more money when you compare this outlet to the ones that are pretty much the cheapest ones you can find in the store, but the quality difference is great. So same suggestion would be spend a little bit more money on your outlets because it's gonna make your job of wiring them up easier. It's gonna be safer and a more sturdy product in the end. Cause honestly, it's gonna be one of those things you wanna do once and never have to do again. I have also put on what I believe is the correct terminology of pigtails little wires off the back of the outlet. The purpose of this is to allow me to take this and then connect it to my wires in my junction box with either Wago lever lock nuts or traditional wire nuts if that's your preference. These pigtails allow you to add and remove your outlet as needed. You're not constantly twisting and wearing out or stressing your wiring that runs through your walls. And it also keeps you from cutting things too short as you over the lifespan or other people 
replace outlets, change it, and all so forth. You've got this to work with. You can consume and destroy and put new ones back. I'm going to go ahead and stick this in this box, which will be quick because I got the pigtails done. I got my Wego lever locks. It's just a matter of snap, 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 squish it in, and calling it done. Technique. Look at that technique. This is, I don't know what I'm doing, but it no, kind of works this if I do enough. Technique a la uh, School of Hard Knocks or whatever they call it. Learn yourself. What well, works? Yeah. This is uh, teaching yourself drywall while your husband's digging trenches. Not that he knows anything either about drywall. Pretty things. much. Mm -hmm. Oh, thanks. Sam is making me share with you my technique on doing this which I don't know that I really have a technique. I'm just kind of finding what works as I go. Um, I didn't even watch any YouTube videos on this. But anyway, I'm just putting a bunch of mud on either side of the joint and then I lay the, the piece over top of it, squeeze out as much as I can and put it back over top and make it thin. I don't know. kind of corner bead we got it's the tape on kind and it has a metal piece in the middle um, I did one and it seemed to be too splayed apart so Sam has taught me to go through and bend it to the inside a little bit and then it can just bend right back out as it needs to when you push it up against the wall kind of hard to do the vice versa of that Next, I gotta go up and squish out the extra to lay it down flat so it doesn't look like it's kind of bubbled. And then I put a little bit more on top so it gets nice and wet and has a little bit of the mud holding it at the top. What are you guys doing? I don't know. Hangings. Helping Isaac with the level that's really tricky. I'm trying to help. Why don't you guys sit in front of the fan over here? Mm, it's a little bit comfortable back here. It's comfortable back here with the contractor trash bags and okay. Hey, whatever works. <laughs> Figured you would ask him, why aren't you playing outside? Yeah. Because it's too hot. It's way too hot to be outside. I was just commenting to Angela that that looks so much better with that cabinet gone above the fridge. It really, I guess, shows off or draws your attention to just how tall the ceiling is here. Our house has nine foot ceilings in the middle, which is, I feel like, really, really rare for an 80s model single wide. But it's one of the biggest reasons we really like the place and have put so much work into it. 
Well, I know you may not feel like, or you may feel like you're gonna get critiqued by professionals, but I think what you did in your method is fine because I've seen it look and work great in our bedroom closet and pantry. I hope. It looks good. <laughs> it may not be conventional, but I mean, what part of this is conventional? Who does this to an old 88 model single wide? Only crazies. We well, have to be crazy. But it's pretty much a brand new home by this point. Just about. It's our sleeper home. Looks ugly on the outside. You'd think, oh my gosh, we got the, what are they? Not the Jeffersons. Beverly Hillbillies living it here, but. I was trying to figure out where you were going. I was trying to roll through the credits and sing the song. But inside, it's a, yeah, it's pretty much a brand new house. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that's going to be it for today as far as us working. We, um, okay, for as a reality timeline, this is the same day that we finished the ditch and the meter base. That was just earlier today. We went and had a break in Camper Town, and we decided we were ready for more punishment. Punishment. Yeah. Punishment. But now we get to work on the inside of the house for a while, which is a nice change. We're not out in the direct sunshine and getting more sunburn sunshine the, the term sunshine is way too happy and polite for what the sun feels like it's doing to you yes it does it's sun we are getting massive amounts of vitamin d uh-huh probably more than we need but whatever all right see you guys in a second because i got some stuff i want to show you for tomorrow's work and i don't think this video is long enough so sit tight all right i'm heading out of the workshop and i want to show you guys Real, you know, real time here, real world, what's going on, how we power the house. So since we don't have any grid power at all, and we won't get it until we get our final CO inspection and the whole house is done, we've been running off of our Blue Yeti portable battery pack inverter all-in-one plug thing. We've been running our camper off of it for many, many months. I want to say we've had that thing for at least six months now. Well, we've upgraded our solar back at the camper town. We have all that. So we've been using the Blue Yeti in the house. Well, the battery's close to being dead. So I got one of our extra solar panels. I'm gonna set it out here and set up the Blue Yeti and let you guys at least see a way how we can power the house, charge everything, and otherwise continue to get by as we're working on the house until we have real power. All right, we got a solar panel here laid up against a folding metal chair. Yep. And the Blue Yeti's sitting down here in the shade so it doesn't get too hot. Got the MC4 cables coming out of the panel. And this adapter that comes with the Blue Yeti, MC4 connectors. I'm just going to connect them up. Now we've got our solar panel going into an XT90 adapter. And then into the Blue Yeti's proprietary adapter. And it's like an aviation plug. It locks into the side. Alright, on the side of the Blue Yeti, we'll just plug this up. And it'll automatically power up once it senses power coming in. So we'll let it boot up. All right, AC circuit is on. So now what we'll do is just run a drop cord from here into the house. That's, that's it. That's how we're juicing up the place as we work. As I'm working on cleaning up the bathroom for the next step of things to do on our never-ending step of this project, it is really nice to take out all of the leftover plumbing bits, various PEX pipes, joints, and things that we no longer need. We're done with the plumbing, everything's checked out, we're good. So it's really nice to say, yes, we can remove the plumbing supplies, parts, connections, fittings, and everything completely from the house. The stuff that we've overbought, Take it back to the store. The stuff that we have for additional, go put it in the workshop. It's pretty cool. Just wanted to share the, the funness of reaching that milestone that we can begin to really start cleaning out the house a little bit on, well, certain things.
Here in our master bath, we had an electric tankless water heater back in North Carolina, but have since decided to switch back to a conventional tank style water heater. When we converted from our old tank to our tankless, we never saw any difference in energy consumption. We never had giant savings on our water bill or power bill and didn't really have much benefits of a tankless system. In addition to that, we also had problems where the tankless heater, when it was in use, would fluctuate the lights. We have checked with our home's electricity, it was not an issue there. The issue lied with the power company and the actual demands that a tankless heater puts on the grid to where pretty much when it had no choice and had to just live with the flickering. When we moved the house here to Tennessee, we had an electrician come out and we talked to them and the power company about the tankless heater. And he said the exact same thing was gonna happen here as we ran into in North Carolina, that it was just gonna draw that much and utilities out here are not really designed for an instant supply of 18 to 20,000 watts of electricity without other systems such as LED lighting, which is more sensitive to fluctuations in voltage, flickering. In addition to that, we didn't have room outside on our meter base to add the four breakers required for a tankless system, plus have other sources for us to be able to connect our septic system as needed because it's a pump system and still have room to grow for additional needs in the future. So all those things came together to allow us to decide, you know what, let's just go back to a tank style heater. We have the original real estate still available here in our bathroom. Yeah, we lose a little bit of floor space, but if we're not gonna have any flickering and not gonna hurt ourselves from an energy standpoint, it's fine. We already have that water heater installed, so now what I'm gonna work on today is building a water closet, I guess probably a literal water closet, around it to kind of hide it from view, but make sure I leave access doors and basically a doorway so that we can get this out, replace it, service it, work on it, however we need down the road. turned out really good. Overall, it was a pretty quick project to do. I um, don't know how long it took me, but less than three hours maybe. And that's with stopping here and there for stuff too. But we didn't use that many two by threes and all of the drywall is leftover scrap offcuts 
from the drywalling the bedroom, kitchen, laundry room area. So that's really nice too. I added some additional support structures on the ceiling of this box so that if Angel needs to store anything such as linens or things like that, we can do that safely with no problem. But I still left a plenty of height inside here for any kind of future proof needs. While this is an electric heater and those don't generate heat or need any kind of ventilation or anything per se, it will have it with the door that we'll end up putting on here and it has plenty of room inside as well to not be an issue safety wise. The doorway is still plenty wide enough to get the water heater out. The opening is 22 inches and the water heater's diameter is 20 and a quarter. I'm hoping I'll be able to find a door that will fit in this opening pretty well while still allowing the water heater to come completely out and a new one be put back in if we ever need that. Hopefully that day will not be anytime soon because this one is brand new. So fingers crossed that it holds out and we don't have to redo this anytime in the future. So that's about it for my time in the bathroom. Let's go see what else we can do and see what Angel's been doing while I've been playing with the closet, water closet. I think the corners are looking pretty good. I still have a few coats left to do to kind of get the front smooth, but I'm happy with how it looks. It does look really good. It looks a lot better than the old trailer stripes, strips, whatever. And those corners, honestly, are very, very, very nice looking. Thank you. You spent a lot of time on it, but it looks really, really good. Thanks. We went to the store the other day, and one of the things we picked up is this little guy. A GFI receptacle tester with LCD screen. This is the particular Klein Tools RT250 model tester. I like it because it is a digital output, very easy to read. Some of those cheaper ones are just like three or four little lights and then there's a key on it and you say, oh, okay, this light, that light. They work fine, but this one wasn't really that much more expensive. Plus, it has the ability to reset and test GFI outlets or force a fault and that's really nice. The reason that I bought this is so that I can go through and test all of our outlets inside and outside everywhere with the house before we get our final electrical inspection, which is what the electrical inspector is going to do as well. That way we should not fail our inspection when that day comes. And also I can find out if there's anything wonky with the wiring and fix it now. This is by far probably one of those specialty tools that not every homeowner may have because uh, I guess the average homeowner is not doing a lot of electrical work. But in our case, and since we are about to be fully inspected, it's worth the 19 bucks and hey it's also a new tool so win-win to use this guy you just press and hold the power button it allows it to turn on and then you plug it up into one of your receptacles so let's point you guys over here at the one that i did i think it was in this video here next to the stove and let's see did sam do it right wrong or what
All right, so what you guys saw there is the meter told me we have an open ground. That is to be expected. This mobile home is not connected from this sub panel to the meter base outside and to the ground rods because there's no wires connecting them and there's no ground rods out there. So I have to ignore the open ground error. The cool thing about this meter is it will also tell me if I have an open hot or an open neutral. I've gone through all of the outlets in the house and the only message this guy gives me is open ground. So I feel confident that, good, in the course of our mobile home being moved, nothing crazy happened wiring. As we've worked in our bedroom, laundry room and everything, nothing crazy has happened there either. So cool. It does put us in a unique situation since we are running off of solar and generator and a drop cord of about 150 feet that our voltage reading is low. It should be 110, 115, around that range. We're only getting 105 to 104 volts. That is a true real life representation of what voltage drop over a long span of narrow gauge wires actually looks like. All of our drop cords powering to the house are 12 gauge, but still at 150, we've got about, we'll say 10 volt drop overall. So pretty cool to see that with a little meter like this as opposed to the little small ones that only have the three lights. Pretty cool. Another neat thing about this is it has a memory. Since you put batteries in the back, which are included, you can plug it in once, unplug it, and look and see what it says. That is very handy for outlets that might be difficult to read, whether it be at the fridge where it's, you know, kind of taller than others, or down low, or whatever. Plug it in, wait three seconds, pull it out, read your meter, and you know what's going on. Very neat. It is good to know that all of our outlets and circuits look good. That is one thing that was an unknown. And like I said, about 20 bucks, it's well worth it in my book, as opposed to a failed inspection and paying for a second inspection when we get to that point. We're not really there yet. We still have more work to do inside the house. Electrical hookup will be the last thing we do because once the electrician is done with his part, he calls for final inspection. And at that point, everything else needs to be done. So there's a look at, again, some of the like random stuff we do as we are able to have, you know, 30 minutes here, a couple hours there, some of the stuff we're doing. It's not one huge project, but a bunch of little things. Right. It is good to have all the outlets continuity good. It bugs me that I have that open ground error, but it does make sense while we have it. So no worries there. The drywall is looking great. It's getting done. I'm a little slow with it, but I'm... I'm kind of a perfectionist with it, so it, 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 it's kind of bugging. <laughs> it gets to me. It's okay. We all have our tendencies. <laughs> There's a reason I'm not doing it, because I'm the exact same way, and I'll just get angry. It's easy to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's almost like icing a cake, when you just kind of ice it, and you keep going, and no, it made a ripple, so you got to do it again, and nope, nope, and so it, or it's it just perfect. keeps going on. It is perfect, and you look, oh, there's a spot, and you ruin it. Yeah, but in all honestly, seriously, the bedroom looks amazing. It is looking really good, and I think it's ready for drywall primer, mm -hmm. which will help to highlight any other little issues that need fixed. But It will, but it looks great. The closet does too, 
and the laundry room pantry that's all done mm -hmm. i feel like it's done mm -hmm. so yeah you've been kicking chicken on drywall finishing thank you we it's, just haven't been filming it that much right again it's kind of like watching grass grow yeah <laughs> so what else did i do though i don't feel like i did much you did the closet oh that's right yeah so it was pretty cool getting to build the water closet and honestly that went faster and was easier to do than I had been dreading. You've been, it's been on our list to do ever since we had the water heater installed. We know we need to do it, but I just haven't really felt like it. But thankfully, it was pretty easy. It was. You got it knocked out in no time. Although there's a little more drywall in there for you to finish. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll help you. I can help you. Um, I did like the fact that the size worked out really good. You told me to make it around six feet tall, mm -hmm. and that's great. It gives you storage above if you want to put junk up there. <laughs> Tree and honest, come on, guys. Truthfully, I want to go to like one of the big box wholesalers, like Sam's Club or something, with the big packs of toilet paper. It'll fit perfect up there. Eh. I don't have anywhere Every, else to put it. Everybody else there, if you're a family, you know you got toilet paper hoards too. Don't act like you're mine at four rolls at a time. <laughs> And anyway, so it's cool that I built it enough to hold that weight. Mm -hmm. And then also inside, there's enough headroom. Should we ever change out the water heater, add an expansion tank, or maybe a hot water recirculating pump? I don't know. There's room to grow inside. So it's nice that it worked out that way. And it doesn't chew up the bathroom that much. Right. I was worried. We're both probably really worried that we're going to box it in. It's going to feel smaller. I think it kind of makes it feel bigger because it's a clean thing. It is. So... Plus, I put some blocking in that wall in case we need to put some mega grab handles. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> For our old, uh, our old years. Right. ADA compliance here. I'm trying to think what else we got done. I mean, in this video, there's probably not a whole lot there, but this also took place during the Power Trench saga. When we got exhausted or we hit a wall or we were waiting on stuff, we came in here and worked on this stuff too. Mm -hmm. So that's the way of double dipping the chip. I don't know, trying to attack our to-do list. We're just trying our hardest to get everything done and get moved in the house, yet still bring you guys along for the fun. Because it's more fun to watch it than do it. <laughs> I would think so, too. <laughs> well, guys, thanks for coming along. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, we'll see you guys next time on The Homestead. See you guys. Bye. I picked up one of these touch-free or I get, well, I'm not touch-free, but, you know, touch it and it lights up electrical um oh lord heaven what is this called non-contact ac voltage that's gonna be easy to say i wonder if they have a power lift toilet you know like the power lift recliners oh good grief anyway. <laughs> i hit it too early ah. <laughs> oh wow so this is the kind of quarter beat for me to buy come on camera i'm right here there you go so I'm working, yeah, nope, nope, face is here. So I had to ignore the, um, blip, blip. Mm -hmm. That's a hunk of junk. Hunk of junk, hunk, hunk, hunk of junk. They're not really designed for an instant supply of 18 to 20,000 volts. No, what? I think it looks really good. It turned out very good. Yeah, good. Dead. Calling it dead. You'll get power in a few minutes, booger. Yeah, hang on, guys. I'm still messing with wires. I'll juice you up in a minute. Okay. Is that your normal outro? On yeah. the home. Oh, oh, Maybe it was the cadence. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's boots and cats. Boots and cats and boots and cats and boots and cats. Right. Time to sleep. Sleep so you don't cry. So with that out of the way, I don't know what's next. <laughs> what is next? How do you... I think our camera's dying. It's, it doesn't remember what faces look like. It just doesn't know your face. And the batteries did. This thing is... Oh my gosh. Angela has gotten rid of my dimpler, so I'm forced to use a plain Phillips driver. I wanted my dimpler, but it's gone. You guys feel bad for me. Stealing the dimpler. Probably threw it away. No denying it. Oh my gosh. Oh 
Oh, no, it's here to get this. Yes. I was raised by my grandfather. You got an audio book? No, it's not an audio book. It's a very tricky game. Well, here's your tricky game. It's hardly any part of anyone. Flash it out. Probably will. Uh, uh. Oh, I hear their generator revving. <laughs> ah, it cleans out the carburetor. It's all right. We're on solar now. <laughs>